Well, g'day everybody and welcome to episode one of our Manor Lords series. Been super excited about getting stuck into a series on this. Just uh, let's remember that this uh, this build that I am playing is a press build and is uh, is pre uh, early access. So uh, early access is coming out at the end of the month, and uh, and by that time there will be some changes and some updates and stuff made. So we're going to start by creating our character and stuff. I'm going to go through and do that. We've got uh, we can change our name, we can change our portrait. Um, I'm just going to go him, I think. Uh, we can change our coat of arms, which I am going to do. I just don't know what I'm going to put on there at the moment. So I'm going to go through and do all of this. You can see that you can change uh, all of your colours. You can change your different the different style coats of arms, and you can have three or four different things on it. So there's a lot of options on here. A lot of options. I'm going to go through and uh, and change that up myself. So I will do that, and I will see you when that's done. Okay, so I think that's what we're going to go for. I've got my portrait here. Name is Sir Simi. And I think we're going to go with the uh, with the sword on the shield. And, um, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's probably pretty good. I, I, I kind of like that. Relatively simple. It's not as complex as what it could be. There's so many options here. Like, you know, going that is actually pretty freaking awesome. So... I'm, I'm 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 almost second guessing myself now but uh but yeah i think we're going to go the sword and uh like that and we are going to go like that so let's start off all right here we are here we are let's uh let's pause the game we've got a new message thank you build up your town your manor and when ready press claims towards region zone uh by your opponents once a claim has been pressed be ready for battle I shall unite these lands. Let's uh, let's pause. Uh, let's skip all of the tutorials. Got that. And the first thing that I actually want to do is I actually want to have a look at underground water. Okay, so we've got big chunks of underground water there. We've got uh, some hunting and some berries there. So being relatively close to that is okay. How's our farmland? Emma fertility is brilliant. Flax fertility, we've got a chunk up here. Emma fertility is all over the place. Barley right through here. Um, rye right through there. And flax in this area. So I think we've got a clay deposit there as well. How far away are we from... Uh, we've got a stone deposit and we've got an iron deposit. So I, I think... That what I want to do, I know this is going to sound really weird. I want to keep this area, this strip through here for farming. Uh, definitely for flax in here. For Emma in here probably. Uh, we've got barley that we can put in there. And rye is okay all over the place. So I'm going to leave this area and this strip here purely for farming. Got some. Uh, we've got some areas over here. But uh, we've got the the uh, wild animals and the berry deposit. So that's probably where we're going to set up our food. Uh, we've got a lot of forestry area in here. And what I would like to do, I would actually like to, so I think we might set our town up. I think we might set our town up through here. And that will be a, uh, a really good start for that. So possibly even just in this area, start in this area here. We've got some King's Roads here. Now with the King's Roads, the existing roads that are on the map, you cannot delete those roads, so you need to work towards them, uh, work on them. So yeah, farmland through here, that will be perfect. You can have uh, probably some, uh, some industry set up here at some point, and... We'll have some hunters out here and we'll have a berry deposit over there now the first thing the very first thing that i want to do is uh i want to actually set up a logging camp now this logging camp i'm going to throw right here yes i'm going to throw the logging camp right there and i think uh, that's going to be a good start and then what they'll do is um they'll they'll continue to log but once they once they log to a certain point and they actually um they actually start regrowing as well which is a really really good thing so i think we might throw him in there 
get to work. And that'll be a good start. Now, I want to get logging happening straight off the bat. So uh, I feel that that's really, really, really important. So we'll throw that road in there. We'll throw the ox going in there, I guess. Maybe another one going out here. There we go. So that we can uh, move around from camp to camp. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know what happened then, but whatever happened, happened. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll throw that road through here as well. That'll set that up and we'll throw a road through there and a road through to locking camp. All right, roads don't cost anything, so uh, we will go through here. Probably through, might actually go straight through. Might throw a road straight through here and get some burgers. So... Yep, there we go. That'll be okay. So that'll be the first thing that we build is the logging camp. That can be a uh, high priority because we do need that. Uh, the second thing that we are going to need is, uh, well, second and third thing, is the uh, the hunting camp. We will probably put that in here. Yeah, I think we'll put that in there. I'll probably spin him around a little bit. You don't want to sort of overlap your hunting area. So we'll throw him in there and we will throw the berry gathering in here. Oh, crap. Didn't mean to do that. And I think that's probably a good start and they can actually start doing that. So we've got a spot here where we don't uproot the trees. Looks like we're going to uproot at least one tree anyway. So we'll throw that in there. Right near there. And we'll throw some roads in there as well. And then I shall unpause it. So we've got that there. We'll have that road running through there. We're going to have a road running through to... Uh, probably... Run that through there, maybe. And we'll probably run one through down the side here as well. Up to there, maybe. And then that'll give us a, uh, a little bit of a run. So let's um, pause. Let's, every let's let everybody get to, uh, get to work. Uh, I did watch some combat. I did watch some combat and see how the combat goes and stuff, which is absolutely fantastic. So I'm looking forward to getting getting that happening. I didn't get the time to try that in my uh, in, my, in my first look. Uh, I had very limited time to actually record the first look, unfortunately. Look at that, isn't it lovely? So we've got berry trees and stuff there, which is really good. Okay, the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get some uh, burgage plots up so that we can... Um, so we can start housing all of our people. At the moment we've got five families. Um, this one's going to be the priority. So we'll probably throw maybe two families in here um, as soon as as soon as this is built. Uh, then we will have that and that getting built and uh, and we'll throw some burgage plots in as well. So uh, let's go through and have a look at that right now. Um, and we're going to start probably here, I reckon. And I think we're just going to... Um, don't know how many we're going to get in here. It's going to tell us we don't have enough wood at the moment, so... Probably only going to be able to build a couple. That's okay, we can build maybe two. We'll start with two. There we go, that'll do. And then once we start getting our wood happening um, and start getting some proper timber in, logging camp is done. Let's throw two Let's families go, straight into that and they can start logging. And I reckon, uh, it's of my opinion, that that's probably the most important building in the beginning to, to build. Like to build it very, very first. Um, the reason being is you need timber you need timber to construct so 
Uh, everything else you can go without in the very, very first instance. So I think um, we've got our camp there. We've got supplies here. The other thing that we really want to build as well, which I think is really important, is a... Um, is a uh, probably I think some storage um, especially for food because once we do start getting rain and stuff like that our food storage is going to be um, the, you can see up here we've got warnings for exposed goods so um, once it does start raining those exposed goods will actually uh, they will actually degrade so the other things that we want to build but we don't want to go too far on the building is we definitely want to build a granary now i think the granary could probably be built up here, i reckon we don't have enough goods at the moment because we don't have enough trees so we'll probably throw a granary in here uh, which will actually be relatively close to all of this stuff so well, that should be okay and then um, we will be able to store our meat and uh, and our foraging stuff straight into that so um, yeah I think that's another important one um, the construction goods are maybe not what are you guys doing sitting around why aren't you working um, construction construction goods aren't I don't think is as important um, it will probably be a good idea to get ourselves another ox which is going to cost us 20 mm. it would probably wor be worth it hey, give us a hand over here. going to assign some well we don't really need to assign somebody to there I don't think because um, um, because we do have those guys moving around. Look, they're actually building the houses and prioritizing the houses first, which is really, really interesting. So I think we might set this as a uh, high priority to start getting some meat. And we'll set this as a high priority as well to start getting some, uh, some other food coming through. Uh, I've heard of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slanders. That some may spread about me. Signed and sealed by my own seal. Hildebolt von Berenit. Um, Yes, he's going to be one to look out for. And he owns at the moment. Let's end that conversation. At the moment, he will... Oh, oh, he's right on our border too. I reckon this is his... This is his territory here, so... We probably want to work this way. He's going to probably try and work towards grabbing that. There is iron deposits there. We're lucky we've got a clay and an iron and a stone deposit, which is really, really, really good. So that's going to help us out quite a bit. But uh, there we go. There he is. Right. So we've got all of this happening. Um... Hopefully they'll start, uh, they'll start, yeah, they are. They're getting into constructing this, which is really, really good. Uh, I don't want to, I want to get some, I want to get quite a few houses up. And the reason why I want to get quite a few houses up is because I don't want to stretch, um, I don't want to stretch our people too thin. So, um, I, I, we, we need to get as many people as we possibly can in. So I'm going to start off with just um, some burgage plots here. Uh, let's go. We might uh, we might be a little bit creative on this as well. Let's go there, cross to there, down to there, and construct those. We have lots of timber coming in now, so we can actually probably set up our granary, which we're going to set up in this little spot here. I think probably be the best place to do it. Right there. And then that, that granary is close to uh, to the logging camp, to the hunter's camp. You need to add somebody to that straight away. We've got two families working on construction now. But got uh, two families that are housed at the moment. I wonder whether they can actually get any... Um, any veggies and chickens in. 
think they probably will be able to. Now, I'm not necessarily sure. I'm pretty sure that what happens is um, is when you when you do the plot and, you know, you've got these people growing veggies and stuff, they actually leave work and come and do work on these when work's required and then go back to work. I don't think they full-time work in these areas. So the chickens are going to bring us in eggs and the, uh, and, uh, the vegetable garden there is going to bring us in vegetables, which will be good. Uh, I think these guys can probably, we can't grow any more there anyway at the moment, so there you go. Okay, so what I've just done is I've actually changed, and a big thank you to Noble Rambler for this. Um, if you haven't checked out Noble Rambler's channel, go over and check it out. He will be doing a series on this. He does an absolutely incredible series on Ostra. Um, he's very detailed in what he does. He knows what he's doing, unlike me. Um, so give him a check out but uh he he did let me know uh there is you can turn the day and night cycle the day and night cycle is only cosmetic so you can turn your day and night cycle on and off so if you turn it off then it stays daytime the whole time uh when i did my first look um it was quite dark the whole time there so have a look at that it's like uh the, it's like baba yaga's on, little, little house in the forest that. Good old Bubba Yarkas. Okay, so we've got we've got food coming in there now, which is absolutely fantastic. We've got four houses coming up so far. Because what we want to do is we need to have everybody housed and um, everybody housed and we need firewood and uh, preferably some extra people uh, and, and, and a good food stock coming in. So uh, that's pretty important for us. Granary is under construction. At the moment, we've got nine timbers sitting there, which is really, really good. Um, so now we're going to have five houses here. So we're probably going to build ourselves another housing plot here. Uh, we'll throw that over there. And that's going to be a fair sized housing plot now you can see that, that one's a little bit larger and you can, oh, oh, actually i'll show you on here if we go into here and we do that if we build if we build a normal plot like that or if we build a small plot you can see that there's room for a house but there's no room for any gardens or any extra activities or anything like that if we build that up like that you can see that little shed icon at the back there and that means that they can actually do extra activities, whether it be raise goats, chickens, or put in vegetable gardens. Uh, and later on, we'll be able to have people being blacksmiths and all that type of stuff. The other thing to note is that if I go wider on that and we come out here, you'll see that one there has actually uh, proved me wrong. If I go here, we will try and get it, there we go. You can see that we've got the shed out the back so we can do gardens and all that type of stuff. We've got the house and we've got that house icon with the plus on it. That house icon with the plus on it means that you can upgrade this house to sleep two families. So if we were to build that, once that's built we could actually upgrade this and this one was the same to actually, uh, to actually house two families instead of one. So it kind of makes it... Uh, you have two, two, two families living on the one burgage plot, which is really good, and hopefully that'll entice more people to come in. So um, we do need to assign somebody to. Uh, we're going to have to slow down our wood chopping now, and we're going to need to assign somebody. Uh, this isn't. Let's uh, let's prioritise that. Get that granary in, and we'll assign somebody to that granary. And then they'll start transporting all of this stuff. Uh, all of our food supplies and stuff. So uh, these hitching posts, you can move them if you want to. So you can move them to a more central location, which kind of isn't too bad an idea. Uh, at some point in time, we probably want to do that anyway. We're going to need to set aside an area for a marketplace now. What we want to do probably is have a marketplace that runs right through the center of these and this is just an area that's set aside you can see that we can have um 
Uh, 51 stall stalls in this marketplace, which is pretty fantastic. So we're going to throw that in there as well. Uh, underground water, we're going to have a spot for a well here. I might actually remove that marketplace for now. Just going to demolish that because we actually need um, we actually need some underground water. We need a well be available so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually build a well in there uh, we might build it just over here Let's go, and that'll make it available for all of those uh, now we'll put our marketplace in uh, we may put two marketplaces I'm not sure but let's uh, throw that in there like that we might throw a small marketplace in there. That'll allow eight, maybe. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. Eight market stalls will fit into that one there. So the ox is out working his butt off, which is really, really good. Uh, is our... We still don't have this available. We're still transporting goods. Okay, cool. Once that's built up, then we will... Uh, then we will assign a family to work there. Now the family's in this. One whole family. If you assign a family to here. So you can see we've got a family assigned here. That entire family will work there. The entire family. So, um, so for example. Um, uh, hunting camp. The entire family. If you've got a family assigned there. The entire family will... Um, will work at the hunting camp and some of those family members will come over here and they will um they will actually create stalls stuff like that to sell off meat goods and stuff which is uh which is a really cool thing so we need to assign a family to that there we go now i'm going to feel a little bit safer about our food stocks at the moment we're not too bad but what will happen is these food stocks any food that we've got in here bread uh, should actually go over there and be transported over to there and they will also transfer food to the markets so food variety 20% you can see at the moment they've got berries meat and bread in there they are transporting stuff from from the storage area and from over here across to the uh, marketplace so everybody has that stuff available got one family waiting for some uh, waiting for a house which is perfectly fine and we shouldn't have anything else exposed everything should be probably moved to the granary soon so we'll have stuff stored in there so you can see our meat's going directly in there okay we also have an advanced tab which allows us to um allows us to uh select what is and isn't stored in there uh, we have a limit work area and a clear work area there they're going to go out and collect all that stuff anyway um, settlement level has increased which is really good one more family member has joined the settlement um, which is going to be really good for us uh, we also all we have is uh, exposed goods for general storage so because our um because all of our stuff is going to probably be over in this direction, I think we're going to put our general storage here. And then we're going to run a road from here to here, down there, and then back into there. I love the road building on this. And I love the fact that building roads is free and, uh, and is instantaneous. We've got a little bit of a main road running down here, don't we? Um, all right, beautiful. So you can see now that I can click on here and I can do that and expand that living space for two um, for two timber and that expands it to allow for two families to live in that area. There's no point in not doing that, right? So they will slowly do an upgrade there, um, which will allow two families to live in there and we can do the same here. And by doing the same there, then you'll see that uh, we will um, have space for an extra couple of families, which is fantastic. Right, I'm going to slow it down a little bit now. 
to. Uh, taking stock, we've got uh, we've got one lot of people working there. We've got one family working in there. We've got one family working in the Forages Hut, and you can see that uh, they own a market stall as well. We've got one family working in there, and they're transporting all of the food that we had. We don't have any food, any exposed food or anything now, so that's going to help preserve the food. That's fantastic. Um, and we've got a family working, uh, as any unassigned families will work in construction. And they'll use the ox cart and transport and stuff. We will eventually get ourselves another ox cart. Uh, we've got the hitching post. We'll get ourselves another hitching post. What's in the supply area? Uh, that stuff. And that's going to need to go into here when this is done, which they're constructing at the moment. Um, yep, these are these are being constructed with only one family. You can see that they uh, that they do move the timber around and stuff. With only one family um, doing the building and the construction, obviously it's going to take a little bit longer. I'm just going to go down and see what's happening in the market here. Let's uh, jump down here. Well, our houses. The market is over here. And this is where the market has started, which is really cool. Uh, they're out there. He's actually out here doing his uh, planting vegetables for us, which is fantastic because that's going to help us a lot with our food intake in the beginning uh, in the beginning couple of years. There we go. Well, it's not technically. We had it in our supplies there, buddy. We had it in our supplies. <laughs> All right, and we've got uh, we've got chickens uh, chickens in here as well, which is good. These chickens will uh, will provide eggs for us. Let's get back out of that. Okay, so now we've done that. What we want to do is we probably want to figure out exactly where we're going to build the rest of our houses or some more houses because we we need to bring people in. We need to bring industry up, but what we need to also do is make sure that we are not uh, cutting ourselves short with our food stocks. So we've got to be very, very, very careful of that. Uh, each family will use, I believe, one food and one firewood every day, I think, is the... Uh, I'm pretty sure. So, for example, this house when it's upgraded and has two families living in it, that'll be two food um, and uh, and two uh, firewood a day. So, we need to keep our eye on that. Uh, we're also going to want to um, probably have some more. I don't know whether we can at the moment. Uh, we don't have enough wealth to um, at the moment to. Um, to allow that to happen but we also need to start um, earning a little bit more money and uh, getting a, a few more burgage plots to be uh, to be set up for growing stuff if you know what I mean so there we go all right we, we do have a um, um, we, we do have a lot going on as I said as I said last time we've got our treasury now our treasury is the money that we personally, our personal wealth as the Lord, as uh, Sir Simi, uh, that is our personal wealth, and that is different to uh, to regional wealth. Regional wealth being um, uh, bringing money in from taxes, bringing money in from selling stuff, and doing trading and stuff. So there is a difference there. Uh, this treasury wealth, I believe, will when we build a manor house, will actually. Um, uh, uh, count towards us being able to hire our own mercenaries and mercenary armies and stuff which we need to absolutely consider we go back out into the map we know that uh we've got a few regions here it'd be great to capture this region actually before he does because i know that the ai in this are pretty quick pretty quick this guy probably already has three armies and we have nothing um, we've got the Bandit, the Outlaw Faction, and uh, Hildebolt's Faction at the moment. But we probably want to start taking as much of that land over as we possibly can. So, um... Hmm. This 
area and we've got a bandit camp that's actually popped up right there so what we might start doing now is considering um and, and i don't know whether you've noticed this you see our entire village that we've built it's all laid out on the map like it's overlaid itself on the map that wasn't there and if you zoom right into that village see that little right there it actually shows the expanse of our village, which is really, really cool. The only thing that I'm concerned about with this village is we're right, we're almost right on the border there, which uh, which is a little bit of a problem. So, okay, uh, market-wise, what we probably want to do is I probably want to build some. I want to build some roads through here. I want to start sort of laying everything out and getting everything uh, getting everything working the way that we need to. We'll, we'll build that one. Snap to that. Snap to that. Snap to that. Um, I think we'll go there. And then we'll go through to there. Like that. Put that around our marketplace because what I want to do is build some houses off of here as well. And those houses will actually, um, mm, we could do another pack station. They do recommend, they do recommend, um, um, there we go, another hitching post. We might do another hitching post just over here actually. Right here. Right there, I reckon. Just move that around just a little bit. I'm going to do another hitching post there. That's going to help us out a little bit as well for transporting stuff. Um, they do recommend, the d developers do recommend in the first year that you do also try and look at, or, or very early on in the game, also try and look at um, um, trade routes and all that type of stuff and uh, say that that's actually really really important so, um, which is fair enough all right we're doing the save there we've got a new message uh, a strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement luckily a shipment of weapons has just arrived beautiful we can actually now form a militia which we really want to do straight off the bat as well um, now to do that we do that down in the army thing but at the moment we've got we've got a second um, we've got a second lot of um, uh, we've got one on the uh, two unassigned families what we need to do now is start thinking about start thinking about firewood and having enough firewood um, to last us through winter which is an important thing. So I'm going to throw a, uh, a firewood thing in here. They will construct that. We'll do that as a relatively high priority because what, what are we at the moment? We're in May at the moment. So uh, we're still in spring, but we need to consider having enough firewood. These houses also require firewood as well. So you can see here fuel stall and they also need a clothing store and a church before they upgrade, so. Uh, which we may end up building the church here, which will probably be a good spot, and then building some more houses off the edge of here, which I think will be fantastic. Let's throw some more roads in while we're at it. Across there, across there, and probably through there, I think, probably be a good idea. There we go. Right, we've got uh, not enough supplies for fuel, uh, and we need more food. Why do we need more food? We've got heaps of food. The settlement either needs more food or more fuel. Yeah, we're running out of we're running out of fuel. Uh, exposed goods. I we don't have a family working in. We don't have a family working in here at the moment, so I'm going to have to throw somebody in there. I think. And we need to really uh, try and entice more families into the village. So you're probably going to have to unassign a family from that and put them in there because I think food is probably more important to, uh, to keep away, especially in the rain and stuff. 
So what these what this family will do is they'll start going and gathering any supplies you can see here any supplies that are uh, here she will actually um transport back to here because she's part of that family so our well is done our market stall is done people will go there and they will purchase stuff which is really good we've got a 52 overall rating We've got plus two on market variety at the moment because we have uh yeah we do have a bit of variety in there which is fantastic and it's filling up as well so, there you go things are looking really really good all right guys what i'm going to do is i am going to leave this episode here as episode number one i hope that you have enjoyed it but um, when we come back we'll uh, get the woodcutters lodge happening We'll get more firewood happening really as quickly as we possibly can and in the initial stages we can actually balance by swapping the families around you know taking them off here throwing them in here taking them off there throwing them in there if we need to we actually need to entice more families in to the uh into the village and stuff so um we have housing for living fair um, space for eight families which is really really good and we might uh, look at throwing some more houses across here around the market throwing a church here at some point we'll probably leave that for that and uh, I'm gonna try and keep I'm gonna try and keep everything relatively organic in the build and stuff so hopefully that works we've got uh we've, yeah, we've got one family out there but uh hope you've enjoyed this don't forget to give me a like that would really really help if you uh, if you didn't share it around i'll see you guys in the next episode of uh Manor lords thank you for watching episode one catch you later bye